The Philippines have 15 billionaires as well as Manny Pacquiao. How do they live? The late great Henry Sy's six children, Teresita, Elizabeth, Henry Jr., Hans, Herbert, and Harley, are a part of the Sy family dynasty, collectively worth 16.6 billion. Henry Sr. started out with selling shoes and army surplus boots in 1958 and turned his humble Manila store shoe mart into the conglomerate SM Investments, who owns SM malls, SM department stores, SM supermarkets, SM estate holdings, and the Banco de Oro Bank in the Philippines and China. While we don't know their exact home addresses, we do know that the majority of the Sai family resides in the exclusive Forbes Park Enclave in Manila, or what's known today as Makati, a quiet haven in Manila's 1.6 million people populated city. Only 2,500 business moguls and politicians reside in the bougie neighborhood. As the business district of Bonifacio Global City, or BGC, grows with the additions of Oracle and the Philippine Stock Exchange, real estate prices in the size hood are growing with it. Prices per square foot of living space have nearly doubled in the last five years, ranging from $288 to $422 per square foot. Personally, I wouldn't mind living in this $13.2 million Spanish Mediterranean-style South Forbes Park mansion. It sits on a 17,695 square foot titled lot with an additional 6,705 square foot lot which hosts some lush greenery and fruit bearing garden. The living room has a pretty generous view of the garden through the wood framed glass doors. The kitchen is freshly renovated with a quaint breakfast nook which is also connected to the dirty kitchen and 10 seater dining room for family meetings as well as family dinners, hopefully with lots of adobo chicken. The master's nook packs a stately bedroom that connects to a walk-in closet gym hybrid, an affluent ensuite bathroom fit for royalty, and a pocket garden for Sinatra-style quiet nights of quiet stars. The property has six bedrooms and a grand total of nine toilets and baths. No sweat when the family comes over for Bonifacio Day dinner. The cutest feature is the property's bi-level playhouse for little ones or big ones to take timeouts in. 15 Tamarin Road comes complete with two gates, resort-style kidney-shaped swimming pool, a two-story guest pavilion, and a cuatro carport garage. Which four cars should slide under Teresita's carports? Port 1. For family transport, it's gotta be the Cheshire Cat Grin Grilled $182,000 Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 SUV. Port 2 for pulling up to make a deal. It's gotta be a chauffeur driven $632,000 top of the line Bentley Flying Spur Mulliner W12. The Mulliner version has a double diamond pattern in the front grille and a chrome finish for the lower inlet. With that Bentley Flying B hood ornament, people work their whole lives to be associated with that gets electronically deployed and illuminated. On the inside, the Mulliner difference is the diamond in diamond quilting pattern on the seats and a three-dimensional leather design for the door panels. In port three, a $20,000 Toyota Vio for trips to town where you just want to fit in or play undercover boss at one of the SM malls. As a billionaire, might as well splurge for the upper echelon GRS model. And in port four, for when days when it's all too much and you just want to speed off with the option to go up to 221 miles per hour, the carport will be complete with a $2.8 million Lamborghini Countach LPI 800-4. The Manila Polo Club has moved to the Makati area. Can you really be a billionaire without a membership to a polo club? Membership in the 113-year-old club consists of an entrance fee of $35,000, an application fee of $1,000, a monthly fee of $107, and a $20 consumables fee. For most of us, the closest we get to the polo club is wearing a $95 Ralph Lauren polo shirt. And the Philippines shot callers hang out at the Manila Golf and Country Club. Henry Big Boy Sai was the director of the board of the 120-year-old institution at the time of his death in 2019, so we don't think his family members would have a really hard time getting into the aristocratic club. Membership costs consist of an entrance fee of $9,754, an application fee of $1,000, monthly fees of $234, and a $5,000 refundable deposit for if you lose it on the par 71 course and tear up the green. Life Honorary Membership, a special membership class, is awarded to people who have been continuous members for 35 years. Not bad. The eldest of the family, Teresita Saikosan, is a heavy hitter in the Philippines banking world. The Filipina businesswoman is the vice chairman of SM Investments Corporation and the chairwoman of BDO Unibank Inc., which sees over 70.29 billion in assets. 
Henry Sy's heir apparent doesn't publicly flaunt all that power and cash, but if I was the richest woman in the Philippines, I sure would. Hans Superman Sai is the most flamboyant spender in the fam. The billionaire best known in his country for rescuing a newborn baby from a trash can in one of his SM malls is a popular customer at Porsche Philippines, as he's bought a $101,414 horsepower Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 and a top-of-the-line $110,000 Porsche 718 Boxster. As soon as the cars became available in the country, he also spends and invests in art. In his mansion, he houses 165 pieces of Spanish-born Filipino painter Juvental Sanso's art. To give you an idea of how much his art is worth, his With Potent Vivency painting sold for $11,425, his Golden Passage painting sold at auction for $17,577, and his Emerging Efflorescence painting sold for $86,686. And so that collection, Hans Houses, could be worth upwards of $1.5 million. Filipino businessman Manuel Manny Villar has a net worth of $7.3 billion in 2022. The former senator and presidential candidate made his major bones in real estate. As Villar's company, Vista Land and Lifescapes, have presided over the building of over 600,000 homes. He spends his cash on business ventures. The chairman of Vista Mall spent $35 million in 2018 in putting up 10 brand new shopping malls. The Tondor native is from humble roots, having sold seafood in his early years. To contrast with the Sai family, Manuel Villar has no office. He works remotely the same way an aspiring Hollywood screenwriter does, from internet connections and coffee shops, specifically in one of the 40 coffee project shop locations. Considering he owns the chain, it's kind of awesome. I don't think I'll ever end up writing a script in a Starbucks working alongside the company CEO Kevin Johnson. Manny Villar's family drive regular $25,000 Toyotas. I suppose he figures, good enough for a cab driver, good enough for me. No big luxury cars for him, unlike the Philippines' other famous Manny. For sentimental reasons, though, he keeps a fully restored version of the first second-hand truck he ever bought in 1975 to start his sand and gravel business in Star Mall, Alabang, as an inspirational symbol. On top of all that, he doesn't even have any private jets. He's perfectly happy flying business class like your average middle manager. How will the 71-year-old billionaire spend the rest of his days? Building homes. In his own words, I want to build one million homes for Filipinos. I am now around 600,000 to 700,000, but one million is a good number. Yeah, it sure is. Enrique Anselmo Clar Razon Jr. has a $5.8 billion portfolio. The chairman and CEO of the Manila-listed company International Container Terminal Services, Inc., makes him the Philippines' port handling juggernaut. Goods come into the country through him. He's also knee-deep in the sewage business as the concessionaire of the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System, as well as neck-deep in the casino business with the $1.2 billion Solaire Resort and Casino he's developed. Besides donating $976,000 to his alma mater de la Salle University in Manila for its sports development, the third richest Filipino in the world spent a lot of cash on luxury properties in New York City. $60 million, including $24 million on fellow casino mogul Stephen Wynn's lavish Plaza Hotel penthouse. Hey, that's a property that neighbors Tommy Hilfiger's $50 million condo. The rest of that 60 mil is tied up in properties on a pair of condos at 211 East 13th Street in the East Village, two penthouses at 21-3044th Drive in Long Island City, a condo at 100 Barclay Street in Tribeca, and two apartment buildings, 44 Carmine Street in the West Village and 11 Essex Street on the Lower East Side. Little is known about his Philippines resident or his driving habits, but on his wrist rests an un unhideable 8-carat white gold and platinum $48,000 Rolex Yachtmaster II with a regatta chronograph built for yachting competition. Tony Tan Kaktiung has a net worth of $2.7 billion. He's the Colonel Sanders of the Philippines as the founder and chairman of Jolly Bee. They've got over 1,130 locations domestically and 234 abroad and growing. The late great chef Anthony Bourdain ate at a Manila branch and liked it, which got me kind of fried chicken curious. Jolly Bee Ultra produces medium length movies like One True Pair. You can guess what the characters eat at lunchtime in the movie. Imagine if there were feature length Kentucky Fried Chicken films. Tony is also the chairman of a real estate corporation named after my favorite NES beat em up video game, Double Dragon Properties. Tony is known for being one of the most low key personalities in the world of business. His vice, travel photography. 
His camera is an extension of his body. And the passionate Shutterbug probably uses something like the professional grade mirrorless $3,899 Canon R5 DSLR cam. The traveling man probably equips it with a pocket sized $1,100 50mm L glass USM lens. If I was worth a low 10 figures, I'd buy the $180,000 Canon EF 1200mm f5.6 telephoto lens for taking pictures of penguins and lions and such, although it's pretty massive to lug around. Forget Drake, this guy really started from the bottom. This son of a line cook worked with his six siblings in his pappy's Davao restaurant as a youth, bussing those dishes and cooking, taking his part in the great circle of life. At, at age 22, he invested $6,835 in franchising a Magnolia ice cream house, and 47 years later, boom, billionaire. Andrew Tan is worth $2.6 billion in 2022. He is the chairman of the Alliance Global Holding Company and the founder of Megaworld. Alliance Global runs Emperador, the world's largest brandy company by sales volume. Although Andrew lives in a gorgeous mansion in Manila, Andrew recently returned to his Kwanzu birthplace for his first project in China on a $4 million Gulfstream B200 business jet. He should use it to show up to his high school reunion. Raymond Ang is the president and vice chair of the San Miguel Corp conglomerate and is valued at $2.3 billion in 2022. The Lex Luthor-looking businessman celebrates his achievements with what he considers a simple car, a scarlet red $124,000 TVR Griffith Roadster 200. Raymond's also got a collection of convertibles he doesn't treat like garage queens, like his $1.8 million Mercedes-Benz SL Roadster, a $91,000 Lagonda 3-liter drophead coupe, and a $159,000 Shelby Cobra 289 FIA. His trio of cabriolets see frequent action. In Ramon's own words, I don't mind some of the paint falling off. I want to show that I still use it. The Philippines' Thai siblings are collectively worth $2.2 billion. The four A's, Arthur, Alfred, Alessandra, and Anjanette, are the children of Metro Bank founder George Thai, who died in 2018. The Philippines' second largest bank is now CEO'd by Alfred, who calls the shots on the bank's 2.46 trillion Philippine pesos worth of assets, or 48 billion US dollars worth of assets, if you will. The Thai and aforementioned Psy families are working on a joint venture. The 908-foot-tall, $195.1 million project, The Estate. The 54-story tower is the tallest, most luxurious, and most expensive condominium building ever to adorn the Makati skyline on Iola Avenue. The SM Prime and Federal Land collaboration is a continuation of the partnership that began four decades earlier between the families and is predicted to open its doors in 2023. Norman Foster of Foster & Partners, who's designed Berlin's Reichstag Glass Dome, London's $24.6 million Millennium Bridge, the $315.4 million Gherkin, that number's adjusted for inflation, New York's $500 million Hearst Headquarters, Shanghai's Bund Finance Center, and the $18 billion Hong Kong International Airport expansion due in 2030. Column three units looking unobstructedly at the Makati skyline is the endgame. The construction will utilize double slab technology, two concrete slabs that have hidden standing support underneath, which gives home to temporary plumbing and lighting systems, preserving the structure until when it's moved. This gives future residents extensive and accurate modification options to change their 1.7 to $8.9 million ultra-luxury units. Look, we know $220 million is $780 million short of a billion. But we can't talk about Filipino wealth without talking about former welterweight world champ Manny Pacquiao. After beating Juan Manuel Marquez in the ring, the self-made man bought a $309,000 Ferrari 458 Italia. He also owns a $100,000 Mercedes-Benz SL550, as well as a $98,000 Lincoln Navigator and a $101,000 Cadillac Escalade. Pac-Man's got quite a few homes, we'll only list a few here. The People's Champs General Santo City Compound is a sight to behold. You're welcomed through the fortress-style gates by heavy security, and you get biblical psalms to read to calm your nerves before you get inside. He has a full basketball court, massive swimming pool, and a pair of pet deer. His other, more contemporary General Santo City home is known as the White House. He also has a $44.9 million mansion in Forbes Park that he shares with wifey Jinki. Boxing superstar has come a long way from his childhood home in Kibawe. 
The Philippines is home to 110.46 million inhabitants. Only 15 of them are billionaires, and the average yearly salary in the country is $3,218. Compared to the U.S., which is home to 331 million people and 745 billionaires, its average yearly salary is $56,310 making it more possible for average citizens to rise in income.